Hallelujah, that, uh, that the spirit of prophecy will be resident in this place this morning, that you would move by your spirit, not only here, but across the nations, Lord. Father, let this word go out throughout the earth this, this morning, for it's from you and from your throne. And so we give you the praise and the glory. We give you the honor. Hallelujah, we exalt you, Lord, and we, we praise you, Lord, and we give you our love, and we give you our, our everything, our mind, our strength, our heart, our soul. And so, Father, use your church to the praise of your glory. Use your people to the praise of your glory. We bless you this morning, Lord. We bless you this morning. 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 Hallelujah. You're ever speaking from the throne. You're ever declaring and decreeing. And you said you do nothing in the earth realm unless you reveal it to your servants, the prophets. And you're revealing the plans and purposes of, of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven, even that it would come into the earth. And we pray that your word will have pre free course in the earth. And we pray that your word will break up the hollow, the hard hearts and break the stiff necks and the rebellious that are in the earth. And we pray, Lord, that you would have your way, that the angels have been released and we release the angels from this place this morning we release the angels of the Lord to go forth and what and, and, and uh, obey your word and do your word in the name of Jesus of Nazareth every nation every knee shall bow we address them and we speak to them through the oracles of God and through the voice of God so father use us to the praise of your glory use us to the praise of your glory for you said you would said and you decreed and declared and you told me you said tell my people that they must mature and they must grow up. They must mature. Tell my people that they must understand that the, it is finished. It is over, said the Spirit of the Lord. My son defeated the enemy. And this is not a, this is not a rematch. This is not a comeback match. This is not a, a, a thriller in Manila, said the Spirit of the Lord. But Jesus Christ won once and for all and beat the enemy and beat him death. For he comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. That is his method. You're no longer fighting against good and evil, but you're fighting against lies and deception. But the truth shall reign and the truth shall prevail and the light of my word shall prevail in the earth. For I'm calling nations and I've shed, shut down nations and uh, I'm dealing with those in authority. I'm dealing with those in commerce. I'm dealing with those in the media. I'm dealing with those in the banking. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. How dare you think that you can fight me? How dare you think that you can have a victory over my earth, over what my son paid his precious blood for. I will never give the earth back to the wicked one. I will never give your children to the wicked one. I will never let him have an ounce of joy. He shall never see victory. He shall never taste the goodness of the Lord. He has lost. and He will always be a loser in the earth. And I'm going to cause the hearts of men to begin to change toward each other and walk in the love. Did I not say my word, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven there is no pain. Heaven there is no sickness. Heaven there is no disease. There is no hatred. There is no guilt. There is no bitterness. There is no shame. And I desire to see the same in the earth, said the Spirit of the Lord. I desire to see my children show the love. I desire to see my children change the atmosphere and change what the enemy has tried to create. Deception and lies for thousands of years. He has no strength. He has no power, but he has the power of the lie. He has the power of deception. And men have submitted their hearts to them, to him and to the kingdom of darkness. And I'm coming with the sword, said the spirit of the Lord. The sword of righteousness shall judge in this hour. The gravel shall, has been coming. And I'm coming with a gavel because I will execute swift judgment judgment upon the nations and upon the heathens for many have turned away their hearts and many said I will not bow my heart to the God I will have my way I will do what I want to do and they put their stock in gold and they put their stock in silver and bitcoin and cash and money but not put their heart on the living God it shall perish it shall perish it shall perish it shall perish at the spirit of the Lord for my currency is seed time and harvest blessings and joy peace and tranquility so know that there's a shaking, I'm shaking the earth, and it's not a shaking because I'm walking the earth, said the Spirit of the Lord, and when I walk, things begin to shake, and I'm up, upheaving and upturning and turning over, hallelujah, like a, a sore body, the earth is sore, and the putridness is coming up to the surface, and I'm cleansing, and I'm judging, and I'm washing, and I'm redeeming, and I'm sanctifying, said the Spirit of the Lord, and I'm pouring out my spirit, but I'm also pouring out my fire to deal with the wicked, to deal with 
the wicked to deal with the corrupt. Uh, and I'm showing you the corruption. And yes, I've come and I've exposed the giants in your land, uh, the giants of media, the giants of Hollywood, the giants of political parties, the giants of, uh, uh, of, of social media. All these giants are roaring and, and, and trying to show their faith. And I'm showing them to you so you will see that I've given you power and authority over the enemy. I've given you power and authority. So get your rocks, get your sling, for you shall slay the giants in the land, and many miles will be stopped, and you will come into unity, said the Spirit of the Lord. There shall be unity in my church. There shall be unity in my earth. There shall be unity and joy, unspeakable, full of glory, shall come into the earth realm. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your way. Prepare your way. Judge your hearts that I may not judge you with the gavel, and that I may not smite the drought gavel, but I'm coming with the sword. I'm here with the sword to divide of sunder soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Wicked men are being exposed and I'm removing them out of their place. I'm removing them out of their authority. I'm removing them out of my people for this, for your cities and, and your city shall not be a cauldron of flesh that they may partake and they may eat of your flesh and I will smite the king. I will smite the ruler. I will smite the corporate head. I will smite those that, that said I am in control. I will smite the media heads and they shall fall and they shall roll in the earth and you shall see my hand diligently removed like a surgeon I shall take my spiritual scalpel and remove the cancerous tumors out of my body of Christ. Yes, I'm coming into my church. Yes, I'm coming into my body. I'm removing those from the pulpit uh, that don't have my heart. I'm removing those from a pulpit uh, that allowed the wicked to, to prevail in the house of the Lord, uh, that allowed them to bring the corruption in, uh, allowed them to come in with uncircumcised hearts. Yes, I'm removing the pastors, and you've seen many have been taken off of the field. Many have been taken to heaven, uh, and I'm raising up a generation that will turn to the left, will not turn to the right, but they will rise, rise, rise in glory, and they will rise in, in, in power, and I've caused their foreheads to be as flint. They shall see, they shall know, and they shall express and speak my words at the Spirit of the Lord. For there is a generation, there is a holy seed that I desire to come into the earth. There is a holy people that I desire. Did I not call you to be kings and priests? So now I'm coming, said the Spirit of the Lord, uh, and I'm changing mantles and I'm changing garments and I'm causing my sons and daughters uh, to stop sitting under tutors uh, and instructors but, but begin to walk in, in, in a maturity and begin to handle the business of the Father's business in the kingdom of heaven and on, on the earth. Uh, you begin to business, you begin to uh, create businesses, uh, you begin to feed the poor, you begin to house the poor, you begin to come up with creative ideas in the earth. God said, I will transfer, I'm transferring the the wealth. Yes, you've been waiting on the wealth and you've been waiting and waiting and I've been waiting and waiting for you to return to me and I'll return to you what belongs to you. I've been waiting on the hearts to be turned to me. I've been waiting on the hardness to go away. I've been waiting on those to get rid of the hard heart of unbelief, uh, the hard heart of doubt, the hard heart of fear. God did not give the spirit of fear so I allowed this darkness to come uh, that you may rise to the occasion. Yes, I allow myself to be removed from the house of God and from the earth for a season, that you may awaken, that you may stand strong, and you may stand strengthened, and be strengthened by the power of my might, that you will see that there is only one God, and there's only one way you can turn. I've made it, I've made every exit a block. i blocked every exit in the earth realm, and no one can escape. Uh, hear me, O wicked. Uh, there is not a heaven. There is nowhere in the earth. Uh, there's nowhere in the mountains. Uh, there's no way in the darkness you can hide from me. You can't hide from me in the natural, and you can't hide from me in the spiritual. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Turn Turn your heart away from the living God and turn your heart to the wicked one and, and, and come in league and covenant with him and I shall smite your hand and I shall break the covenant that you made with death and hell and I shall bring you into the place of judgment, the place of fire, the place of burning, the place that you would, you would never want to be in that place and there will be no exit, there will be no way out. So turn your heart. Turn your heart, you politicians. Turn your heart, you governors. Turn your heart, you bishops. Turn your heart, you, you apostles and prophets. Turn your heart to me, for the sword of the Lord is coming into the land to smite, and the gavel is coming, has come down to execute vengeance upon the heathen, execute vengeance, and my word says, judge yourself, and you will not be judged. But I'm coming, said the Spirit of the Lord, with a righteous judgment, and I'm rising up my prophets and apostles with a righteous judgment, with a righteous sword, and they shall begin to speak 
speak the word of the Lord into the earth realm with a righteousness, and they shall begin to smite. They shall get to smite the wicked and cut out the strongholds. For I've called you to dominion. I've called you to reign as kings and priests. I've called you to walk in my glory. I've called you to walk in my presence. I've called you to walk in my anointing. I've called you to walk in my grace. I've called you to walk in my peace. I've called you to walk in my mercy, and you shall exude the glory of the kingdom of God. So prepare and see and know that the earth belongs to me and nations belong to me and churches belong to me and no one can snatch you out of my hand for I formed you in my hand, said the Spirit of the Lord. And I am, my son has the reminder in his hands, the scars in his hand remind you, remind him of the price that was paid. The blood has cried out from the ground. The blood has redeemed the earth. The blood has redeemed the covenant. The blood has redeemed the garden. The blood has redeemed it. So stop listening to the lies of the wicked one. He gets no rematch. He gets no overtime. He gets no, another match, another fight, another fight, another fight. He wants to keep continuing to fight. He's lost and he'll always be a loser. And you don't have to fight him. Execute the judgment that is written. He wants to take your belt. Hold fast to your crown. Let not the enemy steal your crown in this hour. Hold fast to that which you have. For he will steal the crown because he can't win the crown. He will pilfer. He will steal. He will climb in your windows. He will come through your doors to steal your victory. And say he won. And say, I'm the king. And say, I'm the, the, the victor. But he's the loser. And many have lost their crowns and many have lost their belts because of thievery. Because of the stealer, the thief, the robber, the corrupt one has stolen generation blessings. Has stolen generation anointings. Has stolen generation destinies because he's a stealer. He can't create. He can only steal. He can only steal. He can only steal. He can only steal and corrupt and twist and turn. But he can't create anything. He's a liar. And he'll always be a liar. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's just, that's just the beginning. Oof. Hallelujah. It, this is just the beginning. I'm going to promise that the whole, whole, the whole, the whole, whole, the whole, 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 whole. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But I want to deal with, I want to, I want to deal with, uh, this is, this is, uh, I shared last week. I call this new apostolic order for reigning in glory. In the outpouring, the gavel and the sword. And this, this word stems from what I shared last week. Is my, is my headset on? Kurt, come adjust this headset because it's not loud enough or it's not EQ'd enough. Just, 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 it's not even on. It's off. Oh, it's not even off. Hallelujah. Welcome to those on Facebook. Welcome to those on YouTube. Amen. If you are, uh, and those you are on, on, on the Zoom, I, believe, I, I presume that you're on Zoom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, it's sharing. Okay, it's sharing. So that's fine. It's sharing. Hallelujah. I want to go back over. I'm going to go back. I shared with you last week. Um, the dream I had, and I really it was kind of well. I should have did, but the Lord gave me so much download after 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 Sunday that this this is awesome. This is whew, this is 35 years of preaching coming to a head. Amen. 35 years of ministering the word of the Lord to you, and uh, it's it's just awesome. Now I'm gonna go back over the dream again. I shared in my head. Uh, in this dream. I was I was I, I was pulling up into the uh, to a stadium for a crusade, you know, like like a Benny Hinn crusade or whatever. And I pulled up in the stadium. I was in the car, and I went to the door that I normally would go to because I, uh, back in the 90s, and uh, I worked with Benny Hinn 
on the platform and I would pick up Morris Cirillo when he was in the hotel and bring him and I would, they, they had a special door that I went through, not what the crowd went through, but the special door for the pastors and those that are working security and I worked security, I worked in the pastor section, whatever. And uh, I went to the normal door that I would go in and, and, and the guy said, no, you gotta go to door 44. I said, door 44, door 44 is, is all the way around on the other side of the, of, of the building and so I had to go all around the door 44 and then walk back to the door. They would come through uh, that door to where the pastors were, where the green room was, where Benny Hinn would be behind the, in the green room or something back then. I would walk back in that, in that room. And uh, I was one of the first ones there. When I got there, the Holy Spirit said, look in the closet. I put a closet up there. In that closet, there were all kind of clothes. My old clothes, my mantles, all my favorite suit coats and favorite jackets and this is one of them I'm wearing today I got the jacket that goes with it too uh, and God would have me when I minister use certain clothing for certain messages prophetically more authority this is more of the apostolic authority symbol of authority that God wants to uh, relay and so I'm looking at all these clothes and I had all these beautiful you know bling in them and you know silvery stuff I said here's all my clothes I've been waiting on I've been waiting you know wanted to wear these clothes for a while so I was I decided I'm going to roll, and, and my wife had hers on that second half of the rack. She had her clothes. I said, we need, I need to get these clothes in my car. I need to get them home. So I decided I'm going to roll this rack of clothes out of the closet and then take it to my car. And the wheel fell off. And I went on and put the wheel back on, then the wheel on the other end fell off. And I thought, what is this? And then the usher came in, and he tried to help me. I, I'm on one end, he on the other end, but the wheels kept falling up. The car was too rusty at the bottom to move it. So I had to... I had to uh, Decided, I said, forget this, I'm just going to have to take me handfuls of clothes, because it was a lot of clothes. You know, I wouldn't be able to carry one handful. I said, I'm going to just take me handfuls, and I'm going to walk to my car uh, with these clothes. And I woke up from the dream. And so as I was, went back to the Lord, and I began to understand the dream, I said, give me the, you said, give me the, first thing he said, go to, go to 40, uh, uh, Ezekiel 44, and go to Jeremiah 44, and go to Isaiah 44. And so, As he began to unfold what's happening, and it's talking about reigning, promotion shift, new protocols, new mantles, carrying, handling the glory and carrying the glory. Now, the number four means to reign, rule over the world, kingdom and dominion. So I got a double four, to rule and reign over the world, over the kingdom. We are to rule and world over the kingdom. So door 44 was, is a door to authority. It's a door to governmental reign and government power. I thought I was just going through a door to get to another door, but God said, hold on a minute. It's a different door that I put you in. It's a different door. It, the, the, he said, to rule and reign over creation, including things in heaven and earth including the mouth we're speaking this next 10 years what we bind on earth is bound in heaven what we loose on earth is loosed in heaven and we're ruling and reigning in authority in the earth realm and we're no longer uh, 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 being taught you're no longer under the training of the apostle God said it's, your training is over it's time for reigning it's time for you to reign. It's time for you to step in. It's time for you to put your crown on. It's time for you to put your robe on. It's time for you to become the judge. It's time for you to begin to exercise your authority of the kingdom of heaven. And I'm speaking to the pastors around the world. Uh, uh, Genesis 1 verse 16 says, And God made the two great lights and the greater light the sun to rule the day and the lesser light the moon to rule the night. He also made the stars and God set them up in the expanse of heaven to give light upon the earth. Creation to rule and reign. We are to create over darkness. The Bible says gross darkness shall come but the glory of the Lord shall be arisen on you and you shall become brighter and brighter and brighter. So I'm speaking to you to the, the, the clothing that I saw on the rack represents represents the new mantles. The new mantles. And God is speaking to the apostles and the prophets. The God said, I'm bringing new I'm bringing a new, new uh, 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 
a purpose and a mantle. The old mantles will not work. A new mantle is coming. Some of the old mantles of the old uh, ev revivalists, the evangelists, God said, I'm re resurrecting those mantles of healing, of miracles, of revival, Billy Sunday anointing, these anointings that God said, I'm bringing new mantles and I'm bringing them into the earth realm and you're to rule and reign in authority. So when you go through door 44, you're stepping into governmental rule. Governmental rule. When I go overseas, I'm in a, I go as an ambassador, I go as an, a, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, an apostle of Christ, and there is such an anointing that go when you go to different places overseas, there's such an anoint, a governmental authority. I don't go to nations just by myself. I send angels before me before I even go into a nation. I pray for every day. If I'm going to be in a nation for 30 days, I fast for 30 days because I don't want nobody messing with me. Amen. I'm going in there and I ain't playing with these devils. And so we're to rule over the dominion and creation over the world. Listen, we're to rule over the world. The devil lost the world. Jesus recovered the world. And for the last 2,000 years, we keep fighting the devil over the world. He lost it. And he's got us focused on hate and, and bitterness and racism and all that. And we already won the battle. What are you fighting for? Oh, we fighting good and evil and Satan and God is fighting. It. He ain't fighting nobody. He's been beat. We fighting each other. He's got us fighting each other. You know, like when you was in the, in the playground and, 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 and somebody bumped you and then your little friend. I dare you to knock that rock off his shoulder. That's how the devil is. He come over and boom, start and instigate a fight. Put a stick on you. Go ahead, knock it off his shoulder. Go ahead. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody want to get you to fight and they don't want to fight themselves. That's how the devil does to us. And so God said that door four is, an, I'm going to go a little bit more. The, the four is also... What did I write down here? When you look at numbers like that, 44, 10 means to measure for acceptance or rejection. 20 means holy, tried, and proven. So 2 times 20 is you've been tried and proven. 40, 4 times 10 means God said, I'm checking you every level, precept upon precept, line upon line, whether I will give you authority or not every step of the way. Moses was in the desert uh, uh, 40 years. The children of Israel ran, ran through that. Uh, 2 means to be separated and measured. 10 means to be measured. So 40 4 times 10 means approved or rejected. So when I walked through the 44th gate, he said, approved. You've been approved to step into a new place. You've been, you don't go through the old door. I've got a new gate, a new place of authority, a new place of the prophetic for you to walk in. So we're walking into a new gate. So I'm prophesying to your apostles and prophets around the word of God has opened up new gates, new doors for you to walk through. You are to walk and rule and reign in authority. Don't worry about the witch doctors. Don't worry about the warlocks. Don't worry about the witchcraft. God has given you authority over those witches and warlocks and you shall see a great revival in your city, in your village if you would just stand and speak the word of truth and come against these strongholds and strong men uh, in, in your area. Now that the terrain, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, you have a scepter. Every king has a scepter. A scepter is a stick for punishing. It can be for punishing. This is a scepter. This is an example of a scepter. It can be for punishing. It can be for writing. You know, we're writing in the sand. Uh, Joshua right in the sand, y'all go to the left, this one go over here, this one go over there, and we're going to attack Jer Jericho, amen? This, this, this is the plan. Or it was, it was uh, uh, for fighting, uh, uh, was that uh, Moses fought with the men that strove at the whales? No, he took a stick and he, was beat, he beat him with the stick. Uh, it was also for ruling. Esther couldn't come in before the king unless he extended the scepter before her. But also the scepter or the staff, also uh, uh, some of them, they had cut them and put a sword in them and they used it like a sheath and put it out and it was a weapon also. They used it for a weapon. Also in the top of some of them, the king had put his seal and he would take that seal out and stamp and say, thus is it written, thus shall it be etc, etc. And that was it. He took his seal out, stamped it and that was done. It was a done deal. Amen. It was a symbol of the clan. It was a symbol of the staff of the clan. Amen. When the, when the grandfather died, he gave it to the grandfather, the great grand, the grandson. And the grandson died, he gave it to his son, and his son. And so the stick in the tribe meant authority. 
The devil has stolen a lot of scepters out of a lot of bloodlines, amen? And we're here to get them all back, amen? You want to get your scepter back, your authority back in your bloodline, amen? And, and, and it's amazing. I, okay, Lord, I, I remember. Hallelujah. Genesis 49.10 says, The scepter or leadership shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler staff from between his feet, until Shiloh, the Messiah, the peaceful one, comes to whom it belongs. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. As I said, some swords had a staff. And the Lord just reminded me of a dream I had years ago. In this dream, he took me back where I met my African ancestors, the elders. And they were in a tent, and, and, and uh, one of the elders told me to go do something. And it wasn't a good thing to do, but he was, he, he was looking to see whether I had a humble spirit or not. And there were others there too, other brothers in the bloodline or whatever. And uh, I passed the test. He said, you're of our bloodline. So God will re reconnect you back. All your ancestors are going to be in heaven. All of them, way back from way back, way back, way back in Africa, way back wherever you came from, way, all the way back to Eve, you're going to meet them all. In your family. Your family just ain't your immediate family. You got a lot of, a lot of family. And all of them are watching you. All of them are watching you and watching me because God put us here for such a time as this to take authority over the earth. And you're going to see the kingdom of God coming to the earth. And we're going to be the ones that when we go to heaven, amen, there's going to be a big parade and everybody's going to be waving to us. And we're going to say, hey, we're victorious, amen. We march in. You know, when you win the war, you march through the city and everybody throwing confetti and stuff and singing praises. Well, you're about, to, you're about to walk into that. Now, you have a scepter. It's called a scepter of righteousness. And that righteousness equals the scepter of judgment, your righteousness. People say, you can't judge me. Yeah, I can judge you. I'll judge you with a righteous judgment according to the word of God. Yeah, I'm not judging you. The word is judging you. I'm just telling you what the word has just judged you about because you're all there fornicating. And God says, uh, you're not going to enter in the kingdom of God. I, can, I don't want to hear that. Well, you ain't giving it in. Isaiah 14, verse 5 says, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the tyrant. God said, I'm coming to break the staff of the tyrants in America, the tyrants in Africa and around the world and, and South America. These people are greedy. They're tyrants. They're causing the people to be destroyed. They're killing babies. And they're, they're kidnapping children and, and eating children and getting their adrenal chrome, their adrenal grain, and, and all kind of crazy stuff. And, and God said, I'm, de I'm dealing with the I'm breaking their staff. I'm breaking their authority. I'm breaking their rule. God, you watch. You watch, you watch all this Facebook go down. You watch Twitter go down. You watch CNN go down. All of them are going to New York Times. They ain't going to be no more. Amen. They're all going to disappear. God said, I'm going to deal with all of them. He said, I had to bring them. Let you see how wicked they were. Let you see all the disinformation they've been giving people. And now, now that you see it and people are waking up and say, wait a minute. I don't need this mask on. Mask ain't helping you nothing. It'll make you sick. People say, I'm tired of this mask. Well, you put on a paper mask and you're breathing in your own carbon monoxide. They tell you, 500,000 have died from Corona. No, they ain't. I think 30,000 only died. But whatever they put in the news, they, have, they control every newspaper, every news outlet. The wicked control it. They control the information. And now the wicked have gotten together with the, with the government, the democratic government, to control everything. But we're not going to be slaves. We're not going to be slaves. I'm not going to be a slave to them. Listen, you, we're not supposed to be paying taxes. Heaven, you don't pay nothing in heaven. He said, in heaven, there's no pay nothing, so on earth, we shouldn't be paying anything either. There's enough wealth in this earth right now for all of us to be millionaires. I'm going to take it. We're taking it. He said, I'm giving you authority in Genesis 1.18 to rule over the day and over the night and separate the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good, fitting, and pleasant. He approved it. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. So on the fourth day was creation. On the fourth day was a separating of darkness and light. On the fourth day, God did a powerful thing. He set the moon up. He set the sun up. He brought light. I don't care what you do to try to put out a light, you can't put light out. You can go to Walmart and get those, uh, what they call them, the curtains that got the backing on them, what to try to keep, the, keep your room dark. It's still light coming in. I don't care how you try to put that curtain up. You're still going to have some darkness come in that room. Amen? You can't put out light. He can't stop you. He can't put us out. 
Four means to reign. Ten means measure for purpose of accepting or rejection. To try a trial, temptation. I remember the tenth year of our ministry, it was a test. Woo, you're talking about trial. Good Lord. The Israelites wandered 40 years. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. Jesus took 40 stripes. Moses was, in the day, oh, was 40 days on the mountain and the sin broke out down below because they couldn't contain themselves. Eli, Eli ruled 40 years. Then the ark was taken. And this has got, this is part of this vision, the dream that I had has to do with what happened. What ha has happened is God shut the earth down because of a, a pandemic. In Eli's time, there was a shift. God said, I'm going to take them. I'm going to shift the dispensation. I'm going to raise up a different prophet for the people. Eli was the priest. He didn't correct his sons. He let them do what they wanted to do. And they were stealing the offering. They were having sex with the women in the temple. They were taking the best part of the meat. And he wouldn't correct them. And God said, how dare you love your sons more than me? And you wouldn't even honor me. And so God said, I got a plan. I'm going to raise up somebody else. So we, we talked about Manoah and, and, and she had uh, 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 Samuel. And said, if you, I'll give him back to you, Lord. And Samuel was in the temple, and the Lord came and spoke to him and said, uh, Samuel said, uh, Eli, did you speak to me? And he said, no. And he talked to him again. The Lord spoke to him again and said, Eli, Eli couldn't hear from God. He didn't know God. He had lost the anointing. He had lost his purpose. He, has lost, he wasn't a prophet. He couldn't see any longer. He couldn't hear. He said, no, that wasn't me. That must have been God speaking to you. Next time he called, you say, here I am, Lord. Speak your servant. Uh, here's you, and the servant will obey. And so God said, I'm going to bring up Samuel because of the wickedness of Eli. Eli was, 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 was wicked. He was, he was a judge, and, and he would judge his sons. They would go around and judge, him, and he got old. And so God said, I'm going to raise up Samuel. Samuel was a lad. I'm going to raise him up in the temple. And they went to war one day, and they decided they would take the Ark of the Covenant with them. And the Ark of the Covenant was taken and left. And, and uh, the woman had the baby and called him Ish Ichabod because the glory had left. We have seen the glory leave the church for the last year, two years, three years. It's not been a, really a move. God has left because a lot of flesh has been in the church. A lot of flesh and carnality has been in the church. And God said, I'm, I'm leaving. I ain't even in it. I'm telling you, it was, it's been a lot of flesh. I went to, in 2014, 14 or 16, the Lord had me go to Nigeria, and I would go in these churches, and they were dancing and shouting and sweating. And they were, I said, man, this church is on fire. And God said, ain't none of them for you. They were praising him just out of obedience. And I opened up my mouth and said, that's said the Lord. And the fire would fall, and people would get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I never preached the message. I just prophesied, and folks would get set free. Because... We went over there, and people went over there and had crusades. And get millions of people. You ever seen them videos of millions of people in Africa getting saved? Yeah, but none of them got filled with the Holy Ghost. They all had decision cards, but it never got filled. And so now they're playing catch up now, trying to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire. That door 44, if you go to Ezekiel 44, the Lord said, go to Ezekiel, and I went to 44 verse 1. He says, now. It says, then he, verse 1, he says, then he brought me back to the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looked see, toward the east. It was shut. Then said the Lord, the Lord, this capital L-O-R-D, the big capital letter, Lord, when you see that, it means Jehovah, the lawgiver. Said unto me, this door, this gate, shall be shut. It shall not be opened. No man shall enter in by it. Because the Lord, Jehovah, the God of Israel, have entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. So God took Ezekiel in a vision, in a dream, and showed him the new tabernacle that was going to come down from heaven. And he had man had a measuring rod, and he was measuring and showing the court, out of court. And God began to say, he said, because God walked through the door, you can't go through that door. There's certain doors you can't go through once God walked through. I thought I was going back to the pastor's door. Now God said, I walked through that door. You can't go through that door. You go over to door 44. You don't enter into that door. He said, it shall be shut, verse 3 says, for it is for the prince. 
He shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter it by the way of the porch that the gate and shall go out the same, by the same. And he brought me by the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell on my face. See, he still fell on his face because he's still fleshy. People fall down because they're fleshly. When you get in the presence of God, your flesh can't take it. If you're cardinal and fleshy, people will be falling all out. But the Bible says the spirit of a man is subject to the man. And so if you're not used to being in his presence, your body just can't take it. Your body's going to fall out. Because of the glory, the kabod of God comes into a room and, and your body can't, can't take it. You start shaking and stuff. And so this doorway is closed. The prince, now he's talking about a prince. He's talking about a future event. This prince will not be Jesus. This prince will be whoever. When Jesus comes back, he's going to rule in Jerusalem. There's going to be a governor of Jerusalem, a, a mayor or whoever he is, or a prime minister. He will be called the prince. He will go through that door. He will be anointed of Jesus to govern the city of Jerusalem. It's, it's, a, it, it's a lot of revelation. Then he told him, look, at, I want you to see this, Ezekiel 44, 5. He said, now, mark well. You cannot enter God's presence any old nilly-willy way you want to come into God's presence. There are rules. He wrote it in Ezekiel. There are protocols. There are ordinances for the new glory and the move of God. God said, you can't come in here with your skinny jeans and smoke machines like this. You can't come into my presence doing what you want to do. He said, verse 5 says, and the Lord said to me, son of man, mark well. Behold with your eyes. You better see this. Hear with your ears. You better hear what I got to say. Concerning the ordinance of the house of God and the laws thereof and mark well the entering of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. God said, when I pour out this glory, you're just not going to come in the house of God any old kind of way. I come when I, when I don't like the worship, so I'm going to show up late. God said, you're you going to miss out on what guys have to do. Amen. God may lock the door for you can't come in while the service is going on. Amen. Because when the glory comes, I'm telling you, listen, the spirit realm is thinning out. Heaven is coming down to earth. You're going to begin to see a manifestation. You're going to walk through the door, with worship start, and you'll see the whole ceiling open up and you'll be in the throne of God. You think God's going to let somebody come through the door and interrupt while we're connected to heaven? It ain't going to happen. You're going to have to have a protocol. You're going to have to know how to come in and how to go out in the presence of his glory because the glory is going to be strong. The glory is going to be powerful. The glory is going to be, the glory will change you. He said no perverted priest will be allowed to come in. All these people are ordaining these homosexual priests and the whole day, uh, uh, letting this perversion be in the pulpit, all this confusion in the, in the praise team, all this uh, skinny jeans and all these spandex pants and stuff. No, you ain't coming up in the altar like that. You can't come into worship like that. You got to come in with your priest garments on when this glory comes into the earth realm. That's okay. Everybody's wearing jeans and tennis shoes now, but I guarantee you it's going to change. You want to give God your best. Ezekiel 44, verse 6 and 7 says, Thou shalt say to the rebellious, listen to rebellious people, even the house of Israel, thus said the Lord, you are house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations. You think I'm going to just put up with your mess? In that you have brought in my sanctuary strangers, giving them, giving them, ordaining them to be priests, uncircumcised in the heart, saying oh, God loves the LGBT, he loves everybody, uncircumcised in the flesh, to be my sanctuary and polluted, the devil is a liar, and y'all one too, amen? Your rebellion is not coming into his house. When you offer my bread and fat and the blood, and you have broken my covenant because of all your abominations, everybody think God's winking at this mess. He ain't winking at what's going on in the house of God. He's not winking at these, you seen pastors smoking dope, having relationships with the sheep, adultery, fornication, all that God said, that ain't my house. Now that's not my house. I'm not going to lie to you to come in with that mess. You got to have pastors that are going to stand for the truth. You need an apostle going to stand for the truth. A prophet will stand for the truth. I shut it down. I told him, shut the worship down when we were across the street. No, you're not coming in with your own fleshly ways. You're not coming in with the worldly songs and, and, and your songs and stuff. And we want to say, God wants a prophetic house. He wants prophetic worship. He wants the people to tap into that realm. And you singing all those circular songs and, and religious songs and people getting paid to, uh, uh, for uh, religious worship and religious singers and religious celebrities. God said, I don't want that. God, when we have worship, I, God said, I want a prophetic worship every time you come in here. You should be hearing from God every service. Repeating the same songs, repetition over and over and over, go over, go. That's what religious folks do. They repeat the same old songs. Bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. 
I went to a meeting two, three months ago at the Baptist church, and they sang an old Baptist song. I'm looking, I don't know that song. Jesus. It's, I'm serious. Old Baptist song. Please, sir, come by here. No, we went past all that stuff a long time ago. You better call that mountain down and command it to flee. Judgment begins at the house of God. As I'm speaking to the house of God right now. Ezekiel 44, 8 says, And you have not kept charge of my holy things. You have set up keepers in my charge and my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus said the Lord, no stranger, no uncircumcised in heart, no uncircumcised in the flesh shall enter my sanctuary, nor any stranger that is among the children of Israel. The, the prophet, the priest has to make a difference between clean and unclean. And the Levites that are gone away from me, these pastors and priests, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, shall even bear their iniquity. So don't think that a pastor is not going to get away with it. He, God's going to judge every pastor that let them do that what they want to do in the house of God when it came out and when it came out in, in but 10 years ago whatever with, with, with the earrings in the men's ear people got mad at me the men in the church got mad at me I said you ain't coming up in here with that on you're not gonna get up and minister to my people with those earrings on I don't care what the world looks like you ain't doing it there's a perversion in there there's a spirit attached to that it ain't gonna take you to hell but there's a spirit in it and I can't allow that spirit to be released on the on the congregation and they try to challenge me too and I turned one of them over to the devil. And he saw me three years later after he left the church. He said, Pastor, I'm so sorry. I mean, he ran and grabbed me at the gas station. He said, you, I'm so sorry. I'm so, he lost his wife. He lost his house. He lost everything. He lost his son. Everything. You turn somebody over to the devil, the devil will beat the tar out of you. Y'all ain't nobody to mess with, amen? I'll turn you over to the devil. Keep you, going, keep you from going to hell. If that's what it takes, God got to break you down to keep you from going to hell, then I'm going to pray it, Amen? Don't ask me to pray, Pastor, bless me if you're in the sin, if you're fornicating, you're out there in adultery, you're out there doing the things of the world. Don't ask me to pray a good prayer for you because I don't have one. I'm going to make it in. He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. I ain't getting no beating, no whipping. No, no. My mama used to whip me when I was a kid. And I know Jesus, when he get hold of you, I don't want that kind of whipping. Amen. He whipped you that, that whip. No. Mm -mm. You want to do your idolatry and do your little stuff? No, you ain't coming up there. God has to judge the ministers. No new revelation. He said, this is what's going to happen. Here, this is what's going to happen. I'm giving you the word right here, Ezekiel 44. I'm still in the gate 44 now. He said, yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, have charge of, at the gates of the house, ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and sacrifice for the people. They shall stand before them to minister to them because they minister to unto them in their idols and cause the house of Israel to fall in iniquity. Therefore I have lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord. They shall bear their iniquity, and they shall not come near to me to do office of a priest unto me, nor come near to any of my holy things, the most holy place. They shall bear their shame, their abominations which they have committed. Listen, God, what God is saying is, you ain't coming up in my presence with your mess. You allowed those people to sin. You allowed them to fornicate. You allowed them to shack up. You didn't say nothing. You allowed them to have $1,000 lines and $50 lines and $500 lines lying to the people, said, Lord said, get this. And Lord said, get He said, I'm not going to beat you, Pastor. Uh, pastor, but I'm going to let you stay right with the more wicked people. I'm going to let you stay right in that doo-doo pen where the sheep are doo-dooing all the time and, 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 and making a mess and got flesh and strife and carnality all in the sanctuary. But God said, you are not coming near my revelation. You're not coming near the glory. You're not coming near the understanding. You're not coming near anything that has to do with me. You can stay on the outer court, but you ain't coming in the inner court. You're not going to get revelation. You're not going to get inside. I'm not going to use you. I'll let you stay with the little sheep. You can be a pastor, you can be a deacon in the house of God, but you're not going to walk in the apostolic, ruling and reigning in the authority in the earth realm. This is not a something to play with. I'm telling you, hear me pastors around the world. God said, I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to play with you. You're going to, you, you'll be judged. Listen, there is a certain apparel the pastors to wear and the ministers to wear. Pastors that kept the doors open shall partake of the revelation. Those that have kept the doors open during this pandemic, those that have stood with God and said, listen, this is nothing but fear. This is nothing but a lie. God said, I'm going to release revelation, anointing, and glory, and power upon you and your congregations. Ezekiel 44:15 says, but the priests, the Levites, 
the son of Zadok, that kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel was out, everybody's out there sinning and acting a fool in the church. They shall come near to me to minister to me. They shall stand before me and offer fat in the blood, saith the Lord. They shall enter my sanctuary. They shall come near my table to minister to me, and they shall keep my charge. Now, there, 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 there was a procedure that the priest had to do. He said, now, verse 19, when they go to the outer court, even into the outer court, the outer court was the place where the altar of sacrifice was, where people come to repent. They, break this, they brought the, uh, the sheep, the goat, whatever dove, whatever, and bring it to the altar of sacrifice. The outer court, that's where they made the sacrifices out there. He said, when you go out to the outer court, you take off your garments, whether they ministered, and lay them in the holy chambers. And you shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people. God said, I ain't going to let my pastors walk among the people. He said, he told him, he said, when you come before the holy place, you put on linen garments, a linen hat. He told him, put linen on because with linen, you didn't sweat. If you would put wool on, you'd be sweat. God said, I don't want to smell you. He said, you go wash it the brazen leather, put some deodorant on, wash your butt, cleanse yourself up. Don't come up in my house nasty, smelling like a goat. Amen. Wash yourself, priest. They had to wash Put on linen breathing. Don't come in there sweating. You, you don't go in there sweating. If you sweating, that means you, you, some strife or contention or something is in your heart. And you sweating. You worried about something. So you can't go. You got to come in peace. Because they would send you behind the holies of holies and tie a rope around your ankle. Amen. <laughs> and if, maybe we ought to do that. You, instead of them uh, taking, their, taking your temperature and coming through the door, we're going to put a rope around your ankle. <laughs> and you come into this glory, and we have to pull you out, amen? We, we just have somebody right there at the door, and you come in here with your sin in your life, and you fall out, and we just pull you out and call the ambulance, amen? Take you away. <laughs> call a hearse, come get you at the door of the house of the Lord. Ananias and Sapphira tried it. They fell dead, amen? Don't try God. Not in this hour. I don't want to try him. He said they shall sanctify. Don't go. He said don't even go among them, old heathen, hard-hearted, rebellious people. Do you not know that when Jesus comes and reigns for a thousand years, there will still be people rebelling against him? And he's standing here on earth. He said, I'm going to give a man a hundred years to get it right. He said, I'm going to lose Satan after a thousand years, and, and they're going to go right back to their wickedness. This is, this, is, this is crazy. Jesus died. If you think Jesus died to give this earth to Satan, you done lost it. Satan ain't going to ever have this earth. They can try to bring the tribulation period and whatever. God said, I'm going to bring a new heaven and a new earth. Satan ain't going to never have it. It's just wicked men and wicked hearts that are trying to do. He gave, him, he gave the priests, he said, you don't drink no wine when they enter into the Holy Coast. I was on flying one time on a trip going overseas. I was in first class, and I looked across there, and this Catholic priest, he was putting them down. Whiskey. He was shooting them no bottles. He was just... <laughs> Neither shall you take their wives a widow. He said... Here, here, even the priest said, you can't write nobody. Don't, 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 don't marry nobody whose husband died. No, no her that is put away, divorced. Don't marry nobody divorced. But you shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel or the widow that had a priest before. They shall teach my people the difference between holy and profane. Holy and, and cause them to discern between clean and unclean. You got half of America, they can't discern between clean and unclean, what is true and what is lie. They don't know. Half of them vote for this crazy man that ain't got no sense, got Alzheimer's. He's in trouble. We in a mess. God said, you want a king? I'm going to give you a king. You want him? I'll let you have him. And now you see what you get. That's the same thing when he made the transition from Eli to Samuel being the priest. Samuel was a priest. Uh, we'll get into that. I ain't going to have time to go into it next week, until next week. The church lost the ark for the last year because of the sin around the earth. Eli didn't honor God by correcting his sons. God called Samuel to mark a new era. We're in a new era now. The ark was taken. Eli's sons died. Eli's sons died. Eli died when he heard that the ark was taken. He fell over backwards and broke his neck. God said, okay, I'm leaving the church. He let the Philistines capture him. The Philistines took him into their land. God broke them down. He took Dagon, knocked his hands off. 
They put him back up. Came back the next morning, knocked his head off. God began to break out. Listen, this is why you ain't got to worry about this. I tell you, get some popcorn and watch this show because God's in control of this thing. God's going to fight this battle. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen. God said, I'm in the land, and let's see them try to handle me. Let them see them try to shut my church down. Let them try to shut down, shut up the mouths of my people. Let them try to shut me up. I'm God all by myself. God began to break on them. They had hemorrhoids started hanging all down. The plagues broke out. And then they, then they tried to send the ark. They said, this city tried to send the ark to, the, to over there. And the other city said, we don't want them over here. Don't send them to this city. And then the other nation said, we don't want them over here. Don't send them over here. And they said, wait a minute, we better make a sacrifice. Maybe, maybe, maybe we better give him some gold and some silver and, and make some golden mice and some golden hemorrhoids and stuff and put it in the box there and, and send him back home. <laughs> God broke out on them and they got so upset that they put God on a cart, took two cows. I, I'm pretty sure that cart was a pretty good cart. Everybody put gold and silver and rubies and diamonds all on that cart. They said, you're going on, God. Get out of our city. We don't want nothing to do with you no more. We sorry. We sorry, Mr. God. We sorry, Mr. Jehovah. I didn't mean to mess up. We didn't mean to, to capture you. Hey, man, you can go back home now. We don't want you in our country no more. God's gonna, God is breaking out of nations all over the place. In 1 Samuel 5, I, 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 I'm going to finish that. I'm, I'm, this is just, I'm going to have to do part two. I'm only halfway done. And when the men of Ashtar saw that it was so and said, the ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God, our idolatry. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines in them and said, what shall we do with the ark of God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of God Israel be carried to Gath. You know, Gath was the city where all the giants were. Let's send it to uh, Twitter. Let's send it to Google. Let's send it to Facebook. Let's send God over there. And they carried the ark of God of Israel about thither. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction and smote the men of the city, both small and great, and they had hemorrhoids in their secret parts. You don't want God to smite you in your hemorrhoids. They ain't had no preparation H back then. You just laid up all night with your butt itching. <laughs> he, was in, he was in trouble. Okay? If your butt itching, you ain't going to sleep. <laughs> God said, I know how to break out on a nation. So quit worrying about what God's going to do in America. Quit worrying about how God's going to do it. No, God's going to break out. Your glory. Listen, when the glory, I'm going to finish this up with this last scripture. When the glory comes in, and we're in the beginning of what's getting ready to be outpoured, when the glory comes in, it's going to change your countenance. It's going to change your behavior. It's going to change the way you dress. It's going to change the way you look. It's going to change. Second Chronicles 9 says, And when, when the queen of Sheba had seen Solomon's wisdom, and the house he had built, and the food of his table, and the seating of his officials, and the standing of his attendants, his servants, their apparel, they had on bling. I mean, they were sharp as a tack. They looked, look, they put the best. His cupbearers also, their apparel. Nobody had on raggedy clothes, no holy jeans. They had on, they were, came in, they were dressed. And his burnt office, he offered the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. When the glory comes in, it's going to knock people off. When they see you walking, amen, you, we, just, just turn, turn to your neighbor and say, their neighbor, I'm walking out of Walmart. <laughs> I'm going to Macy's, amen. <laughs> a Neiman Marcus, amen. I ain't wearing that old raggedy stuff no more. That was good for that season, but I'm in a new season, amen. You don't have to run through those blue light specials no more in Kmart, amen. You guys going to give you your own apparel. He, he said, happy are your wives, your men, happy are your servants who continually before, who stand continue before you and hear your wisdom. Why? Because the glory was there. People were happy when the glory is there. When the glory is there, you get happy. When the glory comes into your house, into your life, you get happy. When the glory comes in and you don't have to pay those bills no more, you get happy. Amen? When, you don't, when the glory comes in and you go to the mailbox and ain't nothing in it, you're happy. Amen? Ain't nobody chasing you down. Ain't nobody asking you for money. Ain't nobody after you. Amen? We're going to foreclose. When the glory and the presence of God, when the glory comes in, wisdom comes in. 
And so as you receive and open up your hearts to receive, I'm telling you, turn away from your rebellion. Turn away from stubbornness. Turn away from you, re, leaving churches and don't say nothing to your pastor. Rebe, being rebellious and stubborn. Being rebellious because you got corrected and didn't want to be corrected. As I said, you're, this generation, you rebuke them, they want to rebuke the pastor back. My job is to correct you, watch over your soul to keep the enemy from destroying your soul. And I'm going to tell you about yourself. You know, a friend sticks close in a brother. A, t a friend will come up and tell you, and you know your breath stinks. Amen? You don't want people walking around with your breath stinks. I need a friend to go to hell. Oh, oh really? Oh. <laughs> Close my, let me go clean up a little bit. Amen? You walking around with your zipper open in the store. Nobody tell you. You just walk around. Your slip hanging all down on the ground. <laughs> Ain't nobody told you nothing. You didn't been to the bathroom. Got toilet paper hanging out your back of your dress. <laughs> Somebody got to tell you the truth. The truth will make you free. Amen? Love people. Amen? Tell them. Somebody come up. I, I was just in Walmart the other day, and, and, and I could have walked by. And I, a lady was putting a baby in the car, and I just walked by, and I saw the sock down. Of, and I turned around and said, hey, hey, you dropped your baby's sock. She would have closed the door and didn't even see the sock down on the ground. You know babies lose sock. You know that sock that comes in your dryer when you put your socks in there, and only one comes out. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how that, how that worked. Man, I, I got socks. I still I said, where do the socks go? It's a sock demon. Amen. You just put your sock in there. And so what we do, we got creative. Now the kids just wear mismatched socks anyway. They said, they said forget it. We ain't going to try to fight it no more. Wear the two socks. We just mismatched my socks. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to stop now. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to this nation. You're speaking to, the, to, to your pastors and to your ministers to clean up their act, to mature, to mature. For you're coming with the, for the, I hear the Spirit of the Lord said, my, my seal of approval is not what you think. For the children of Israel thought because they had substance and thought they had gold and silver and apparel that they were rich and they needed nothing. But I said they are blind and they needed uh, buy oil, uh, buy some salve for your oil, for your eyes that you may see. Purchase that which is good. And many said the Spirit of the Lord, had, had many of these companies and corporations have built their, their, their foundation upon the, on the sand and I'm going to begin to shake. I'm going to begin to flood the earth. I'm, you're going to begin to see strange things begin to happen, even in the weather patterns. Strange things begin to happen, even in the shaking of the earth. And, and many of these corporations shall crumble from the inside out. As you continue to declare my word and speak my word, I'm seeing even Africa right now. There, there, there are certain nations in Nigeria, the spirit of corruption, the spirit of stealing, uh, the corruption. God said, I'm causing the heart of the people to turn away, even from your own economy. Me, even from your own uh, dollar. Many of your people are going to Bitcoin because they see that you are corrupt and they don't trust the, 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 the Naira that's in your nation and you've, you've extorted and you've stolen and all the gas and resources that I've placed in your nation, men and crooked men have extorted, have stolen, have transported it out of your country and, you, and many have become poor and impoverished at the Spirit of the Lord. But I'm coming to smite, I'm coming to separate, I'm coming to bring in a righteous man and and I, and I hear the Lord, word of the Lord that was, I remind you of the word that I spoke in Nigeria years ago. The God said, I'm going to raise up a Solomon. I'm going to raise up a man uh, like Solomon, man with wisdom that's going to begin to bring your nation into alignment with kingdom alignment and going to bring prosperity back into your nation and the corruption and the greed and the murdering and the killing shall stop said the spirit of the Lord. I'm calling my pastors even overseas in Uganda and Africa and Pakistan and India and, and, and Malaysia and Singapore. Begin to declare my word. Begin to speak my word. Begin to uh, speak uh, make a difference between clean and unclean and, and, and righteousness and unrighteousness. Begin to wield the sword for I have not given you a butter knife but I have given you a sword to divide asunder soul and spirit joints and marrow speak my word 
decree my word, declare my word. For the angels are standing by, the angels are ready to go, the angels have been working, and the angels have fought in the spirit realm, and the angels have pushed the darkness out of the spirit realm, and now the battle is here in the earth realm, on the earth, and know that it is all lies, it's all deception, it's all wickedness. Speak into the ears of your people, uh, uh, speak and, and ask me to move into their hearts and take away the stony heart and give them a new heart, uh, put a new spirit in them, and the anointing will break the yoke in their lives and I'll pour out my water and I'll pour out my fire and I'll cleanse and I'll purge and purify the body of Christ and purify the believers and know that I, if you, I will save your loved ones I will save your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren as you begin to call on my name I will give them the opportunity to receive Christ to receive salvation so keep continue to pray stand in faith walk in faith talk in faith walk in victory sing in victory shout in victory for the battle has already been won. Close the door on the thief. Close the door on the stealer. Close the door on the one that would pilfer and, and, and infiltrate your blessings. And hold fast to your crown. Hold fast to the grace.